Hello everyone, my name is Kez and this is our teardown of an Epson Powerlight 1221. <clears throat> you might remember these, this was the slightly more versatile version of this projector because it had an HDMI port. Okay, so where do I begin? Get your handy dandy screwdriver set out <clears throat> and make sure that you have a Phillips head. Uh, I think I'm going to go with this one. It's a little bit small, but <clears throat> not too much. Now, you will, if you have one of these extensible screwdrivers, <clears throat> you're going to need one with a long neck because there's a screw that's way down in there. <clears throat> so let's start with the obvious elephant in the room here, which is the bulb. It's incredibly fragile and stuff, and it's not to be taken lightly, but <clears throat> it can handle the abuse of being pulled out. So. Let's do that. Okay, so there's two screws here. Just take those two out and put this aside on a nice soft surface. <coughs> uh, now for the rest of the assembly, <coughs> it kind of peels out, but you will have to remove any external parts. And most notable of those is this filter, which slides in on the side here. It's got two screws, one, two, so this poor thing has uh, seen some pretty awful days, <clears throat> used to belong to a crazy person, and now it's mine. Anyway, um, uh, and now it doesn't work anymore, which is <clears throat> why I'm doing this. Actually, the motherboard, the main assembly board, needs some solder work. And unfortunately, until New York State makes it illegal for electronics manufacturers not to sell parts directly to their customers, I'm just going to have to work with what I've got. Or, I mean, hey, somebody in Brazil is selling a motherboard. Anyway. <clears throat> going to remove three screws from this outside part here. Actually, this one is stuck in because it barely actually fits in anymore. You're going to need your other screwdriver for this, probably. Yeah, it's, it's, it's disattached. It's uh, unattached. The last person threw it around a little bit much. That screw in there you don't need to worry about. <coughs> That connects the thermals. Grounding plate. Anyway, flip over to your other side now. As I said before, you're going to need a screw that can get way down in there. And I recommend that you remove this one first because you need to turn the unit upside down and shake it. This screw, which attaches to the bottom part of the <coughs> receiver board, if it wants to come out. I can actually use this magnetized screwdriver. It's probably better for the job. And I think there's one, two, let's see, three, four, five. Five screws that I know of on the back panel here. This one's a little bit worn out, so. So, so one behind the leg here, which is a little bit hard to get to. Okay, so I'm just checking to make sure there's some small holes that look like screw holes, but they're definitely not. Five. Okay, so now flip it back over <coughs> and prepare to remove the top shell, which, depending on how many times you've opened this thing before, 
should just come off very liberally. Now, there's some things that you have to note. <clears throat> that there's two uh, PCB connections here. You have connections to the main PCB, and you're going to want to remove them from the main PCB. It's kind of hard to illustrate, but they're relatively easy to remove. One of them is a ribbon cable. Might have been some variation on ZIF, which has a little plastic thing that secures it in there. <clears throat> Just pop that up and pull that out. I know I'm not doing a good of a job here illustrating, but see there's <clears throat> two of these connectors. One is for the controls and the other one is for the uh, HV, you know, controller, <clears throat> which is long since broken off on this, but I don't use that anyway because it, you know, pixelates the image further. This is a kind of low resolution projector, but this is for the uh, controls on the top, the power button, and things like that. And once that's disconnected, you can go ahead and put that aside. <clears throat> so now you get a nice good view of the lens if you wanted to clean it. And uh, this fan, which I had to repair previously, because as I said, this was thrown around. But now we get to the bread and butter of this, which is the main PCB assembly. <clears throat> so you'll notice that there are several parts to this, that it involves three ribbon cables, one for red, green, and blue. Uh, I think I'm doing that correct. Yes. <clears throat> and this heat sink, connector for the speaker, you know, this is kind of the nerve center of the unit. <clears throat> Removing it is going to be difficult, but not impossible. Especially because it has all these inputs on the back. You know, fun fact, I don't think you need to remove these screws to get this out of here. But I know that there are some screws on the top of the board that are keeping it in place. <clears throat> anyway, let's keep working. So we have some fan controls and fan sensors in the front here. Go ahead and get them to be loose. You can uh, use a screwdriver with this if you think it's needed. Or a tool of some sort. I think I'm going to go with one of these spudgers or case tools. There's a little bit of a lip under this thing. And I've, uh, I've taken this apart before. The first time that it broke. procedure for this guy up front so these are all fans and sensors these cables are still nice and in there should be no problems <clears throat> okay and now I'm going to move forward and continue to work on the rest of these connectors I think that this is for power but maybe distributing power This goes to the external fan, which I'm just going to try to nudge up and out of there with some sort of a tool. Again, you don't want to pull on the wires when you're doing this, and you don't want to touch the circuit board too much. The problem that I'm already having is most likely associated to poor soldering or a broken solder joint. Okay, good. <clears throat> lamp thermometer, lamp fan, AI, ooh. And this one goes all sorts of places, but we still want to remove it. there isn't a very large capacitor hidden in here somewhere. Come on. Mm. 
in this cable because of the direction that's being pulled on naturally is a little bit problematic. But you can still get her off there and then give it a quick examination, make sure it's still in good shape. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So now we got that, just the speaker, I believe. <clears throat> and the real hard part is going to be these ZIF cables because they are <clears throat> difficultly wedged in there, all three of them. Let's undo the screws first. Remember one of these being particularly notorious. They're different from the types so you see on the outside, and they're used for grounding. <coughs> so they go all the way through. Make contact with the top part of the circuit board and the heat sink. I think this is the CPU because it has the most protection. The thermal elements, it's probably the back side of the CPU, but still. There's one more screw in here, four screws. There we go. So you see these black bars here, <clears throat> they actually pop up to alleviate the mechanism. It's a common mistake because the way that this one was designed <clears throat> to interpret that, you know, it's, it's probably a standard like Toshiba connector, but to believe that it goes another way and then you're going to want to be really careful not to scrape the uh, circuit board when you do this. I'm coming just close to hitting those resistors. But again, it pops up once it's free. There we go. <clears throat> Make sure this is my critical side. Nothing, nothing's going on. Nothing unusual, that is. <clears throat> okay. Then you can pull these free. And then the whole board should just lift up and out complete with all these other pieces. Come on. These little cables don't get stuck on anything. Stop it. Okay, so now you've liberated the uh, main assembly board with its CPU, other controllers. <coughs> Most importantly, the part that's malfunctioning now, yeah, there's the CPU, you can see right there, <coughs> is whatever's handling the inputs. It's really, it's not behaving at all. All I get is, you know, noise when I do anything analog, and then nothing when I do anything digital. Anyway, just being super safe can take some abuse, but because it's already, it's the part that's malfunctioning in t the first place. Now, of course, if you're going to reflow this board, you're going to want to remove any plastic. Or uh, meltables, as we call them. Which is only secured on by these two pieces. Again, I'm touching the guard, not the actual <coughs> board. It's going to be a little bit tricky. But there is a metal cage assembly that wraps around. It's also exposed to the outside of the case. If you're having a hard time handling it, you can touch that instead. Okay, so this piece is liberated. So you can see that touching the plastic and the metal here. <coughs> Once all that's done, touching the exterior plastic again, you can pop this interior plastic off. It's not connected to that screw that the HD right by the HDMI there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but <clears throat> and this is the assembly that is malfunctioning. <clears throat> so there you have it. 
get this thing reflowed or whatever to make sure that the improper grounding is fixed and then back to square one see if it works okay so thanks for watching everybody